Welcome to Landmark Implement's customer support help videos. These will help you diagnose common issues in a timely manner. When contacting the AMS helpline, you must leave a message. The message is then sent out to all of our CTS employees. The first CTS to get it will then return your call. Also, stay connected with Landmark. Download the Landmark app today. Uh, good afternoon. We're going to uh talk about some maintenance items, um, lubricants, greases, um, and wear items that are on the combine and flex head and corn head. Um, to start with, we're going to talk about the reverser gear case grease, um, the fully synthetic grease that they deer recommends in the, in the uh, reverser gear case. Um, it needs to be lubed and ran in and out to keep that in a, a usable position so that it's not locked in one position for too long to stop wear. Um, this grease can be used on the complete combine along with any other application that you want to grease with it. It is a higher dollar grease because it is a full synthetic but it is usable in any position on the machine and can be mixed with other greases. Um, the other grease that we sell a lot of is the TY6341, the, the green label grease if you go into your parts department and ask for it. Um, high quality multi-purpose urea grease, or poly urea grease. Um, in that reverser we also promote the HD460 oil. Um, its main purpose is to disperse heat in that reverser. It also can be used in the rotor gear case um, for heat dispersion. Um, if you don't want to use that, that high dollar oil, you can use your just standard synthetic GL5 with no problem. With the uh, S-Series becoming a final tier four, um, we have all sorts of uh, def capability from a two and a half gallon jug clear up to our bulk products that we deliver to the farm. We have totes or systems that we can sell you to get that to your combine from the farm or from the store. Um, if you have any questions about those, don't be afraid to ask your parts department and we'll get you fixed up. Some of the uh, other chemicals we use on a corn head or combine is chain and cable lube. Um, it is uh, different than what we promote during planting season. Um, we promote the multi-purpose spray and there are different qualities in both. The chain and cable lube has more graphite in it for the combines and the corn heads. Um, electrical contact cleaner for when you're going from head to head cleaning that um, multi-port single point connection. Um, do not, I was told, do not use a break and parts cleaner because it will eat the seals out of the electrical connector and it's not real good on the pins. Um, this can you, the electrical contact cleaner can be used on about every connector on that machine so that's a good thing to have up in your cab. As we move on to the, the uh, wear parts of the combine, um, some of the very important things to worry <laughs> to worry about is your your cab filters. Um, they often get overlooked. The recirculation filter and also the 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 clean air filter. Um, the recirculation filter that's inside the cab. A lot of times, I have heard technicians come back from the field and saying that was causing the air conditioner issue that the customer was complaining about. Little tiny filter causing no air conditioning is pretty pretty high, easily maintained to, to handle that. Um, on the combine with the amount of crop that we send through those machines now, we uh, sell in the parts department an aftermarket clean grain, clean grain elevator door. Um, it is made of poly rather than the steel. Um, we're getting a lot more uh, acres covered with that poly door rather than the steel door. The biggest thing is if you do purchase this and put it on, follow the instructions um, on adjustment 
because if you over tighten it, it will start to leak out the side of it. Um, for 60 and 70 series combines, the mass flow sensor pad um, is, a, is an important thing to look at if you start having yields fluctuate um, on your maps. That's, a, that's an indicator that this is worn and gotten a hole in it. Um, the S series is a little different. They're about in the same position, but they are totally different looking and the pad is also replaceable on it. Um, another thing to really look at as far as when you're checking that pad is that there's no debris in behind it. Um, if it if it gets clogged up behind it, it's going to affect the readings on that and your maps will be incorrect. Um, a high wear item on the combine is chopper knives. Um, if you do break a chopper knife or throw a chopper knife, you're going to shake that chopper to death and probably not realize it until it's too late. So a good, good place to really inspect is those chopper knives. Make sure that they're not getting too wore down or or you're missing one because that that will shake that combine a lot. Um, grain tank sensors um, again they can get product in behind them that'll allow them not to work correctly and then you're spilling corn out the top of the combine. Um, there is a uh, attachment that you can add another one to the left hand side. Um, they're all on the right hand side from factory but you can add one for side hilling situations if you're pushing corn to one side or the other in that situation. Um, another wear item the feed accelerator plates. Um, factory they come with the, the serrated. Um, you can wear them to a halfway point on that serration and then you need to either flip them or replace them. Um, the smooth uh, feed accelerator plate is more for food grade. Um, if you're running any white corn or popcorn, that would be the way to go for less damage of the crop. Next thing we're going to jump onto is the corn heads. Uh, kind of some common wear items is the stock roll. You want to make sure they're they're not worn too far right behind the spiral. And a good thing to do is every time you you start in the mornings is kind of kick the head on and kind of listen to it. Make sure there's no rolls that are tinging or anything like that. Because on the 600 series there's just one nut on the end that holds them on. And if they do come loose it can ruin the splines inside and then you'll cause more damage. So if you do hear any tinging sound the best thing to do is contact a service guy and take a look at it. Um, the other items are the uh, gathering chain sprockets. There is a, a serial number break on the sizes. Um, about 2012 is when they went down to the smaller sprockets. And if after they get worn, you can still flip them side to side to get a little bit more life out of them. And same with the bottom idler sprockets. They did change those also. On the early ones, they do have a replaceable bearing inside. And uh, kind of a good practice if you see that washer, the protection washer, off to one side, more than likely you have a bearing that went bad. The newer ones, they do not have a replaceable bearing. You do have, do have to replace the whole sprocket on those. And then the, another wear item is the height sensors. The early ones, it was kind of a solid guide bar on it. Um, they do have replaceable bushings and pins on the inside. Just kind of check them for wear or play inside there. The uh, later ones, they do have a spring-loaded arm on it to where if you do back up with the head down, that the arm will pivot. Next nice practice is make sure that uh, spring is all hooked up or they'll just sit there and flop around and you may have some irregular heights on it or it could be jumping around. Um, another wear item on the chopping heads, they do have these knives. They are reversible. Um, biggest thing is kind of check the bushing on them, make sure they're not loose or, or cracked or any place. Um, 
but if you do throw a knife I'm sure that it will vibrate quite a bit and also the curtains that separate them those are kind of a big wear item make sure they're in place because uh, if they are out or broken or anything it can throw crop to other sides and it'll be a it'll kind of disperse that crop in uneven places and also the uh, ear paddles the corn savers um, on the early 90 series they had a thicker pad on them and then the uh, later ones on the 600 series they the early ones they were kind of thinner and they did redesign them so they're stronger because they had issues with them falling off quite easy uh, but the new design they made a thicker mounting pad so they do stay on a lot longer um, that way it doesn't throw your ears out the front of the head um, we'll move on to the flex heads um, we'll talk some about the 600 and 900 series the uh, for dryland beans um, a few years ago I found out down in Kansas they were using these paddle fingers um, they go right onto the original fingers that are on your reel um, you don't have to change anything you just add these and for for dryland beans they really helped in, in getting those short beans into the head um, so that's something you can talk to your parts department about as far as if you're having feeding issues on either your 900 or 600 series um, next we're going to move on to guards um, I've got uh, two different colored guards here um, the 900 series and the 600 series you're available to get two different types of guards or the, the guards themselves are the same um, the color difference is a high wear or standard wear um, in the 600 series the black is the standard wear the green is the high wear now it, a lot of misconception for farmers was it was a a better guard it was stronger it's not a stronger guard it is a high wear guard that the the cutting edge has been hardened um, you can mix and match if you have black and you want to go to your green which is the high wear across your head you don't have to do it all at once you can do them as you need to do them um, that cutting edge is the the most important thing of that guard because um, of the scissor action that it, it creates and as that rounds off the less cutting action you're going to have so you're going to want to replace those um, on the 900 series the the colors were just the opposite um, standard was green and the high wear was black so one of the confusing things that deer did was switch the colors in that um, we'll then move on to the, the uh, sections um, for soybeans we recommend the, the coarse tooth section um, wheat is a lot of fine tooth section um, also for for soybeans we run either a, a short long or a long long um, the difference is they came out with the short long for cutting soybeans and um, residue corn stalks um, over time we found out that it wasn't so much the section that was that was hindering us as the tipping of the head having it set correctly so that those corn stalks will feed um, again if you've got a short long and want to go to all long long you don't have to do a direct change all the way across the head do them as they break do them as they wear out and there's not a problem they're all interchangeable um, again watch that that section so that it stays sharp um, they almost get sharper with time but once they get too thin then they'll start breaking off and and you're gonna have to replace those um, another thing with the 600 series the early ones had a, a tall stone dam and the later ones had a short again you can change from a tall if you've got an older head that's got the tall stone dam and you can change them all over to the short uh, the thing about that is you have to change it all at once because they do inter interlock and so it has to be a, a change fully across the machine um, with the with all products of parts one of the things I want to want to tell the farmer is that a serial number is very important to us um, if you purchase that that piece of equipment with us we should have your serial number in the computer if you did not or if you um, purchased on an auction bring that serial number to us so we can put it under your profile and be able to take care of you a lot easier um, things that we run into is there's running changes 
that they do on a machine and serial number doesn't always justify the exact time that that was changed so other things part numbers if they're cast into the the item that you're needing or a number close to it will help us get uh, the correct item that you need or bring it in um, also on the heads a knife back repair kit um, Deer recommends this is a temporary fix, not a, a long time fix. I've seen a lot of guys run them a long time and get away with it, but it is a temporary fix to fix that knife back if you break it and keep going that night or, or through the rest of the day. Um, one of the things that confuses the farmer is their original knife and their, their head was a 30 foot or a 35 foot, all one piece. Um, through parts, if you come and get a replacement one, it's going to come in nine foot sections, and that is for transportability. Um, another thing is if you break that knife section, you can replace just that section that you need, not the whole thing. Um, but we're more than help, happy to help you get that figured out, and don't think we're trying to sell you the wrong item by selling you a nine foot versus a 35 foot. Would you like a support video produced for an additional topic? Please email guides at landmarkimp.com. For further support, contact your Landmark location. Landmark Implement, building our business one satisfied customer at a time.